Next, we want to look at factoring polynomials of the form x squared plus bx plus c. So we have three terms, or a trinomial. And the other important characteristic to identify is that our leading coefficient, so the coefficient for that leading term, is 1. And that will differentiate these problems from the next batch that we'll look at. To start these off, what we want to do is look at our value for c, which is that constant term at the end. In this case, it's 33. We want to construct a list of all factors of 33. So for instance, we can multiply 33 and 1 to get 33, or 11 and 3. And then from those lists, or from that list, we want to see which pair of factors could also add up to give us our value for b, or the coefficient for that middle term. In this case, 11 plus 3 is going to be equal to 14, meaning 11 and 3 are the pair of values that we want. We can go ahead then and jump to the factorized form for this, which will be the quantity x plus 11. times the quantity x plus 3. Keep in mind, we can always check our work, and this was true for the difference of squares problems, by multiplying this factored expression back out to verify that it gets us to these, the statement that we started off with. So if we were to FOIL this, meaning we would take the first times the outside, times the inside, times the last terms, or apply whatever other technique to make sure we're multiplying all of those terms together, we would get x squared plus 3x plus 11x plus 33, and then combining our two middle terms, which are like terms, we would get 14x and we would have a uh, exactly the same problem that we started off with. So we can always use this method once we have an expression factored, expand it out to be sure we get back to what we started off with. In example 5, our value for c is negative 6. We can get negative 6 by taking negative 1 times 6, negative 6 times 1, negative 2 times 3, or negative 3 times 2. And in this case, negative 3 plus 2 would give us negative 1, which is the coefficient for that middle term, meaning those are the two numbers that we want. So we'll be able to factor this as x minus 3 times the quantity x plus 2. In example 6, we have another very similar problem. Um, one thing that's a little bit different, though, is these terms aren't in that standard order. What we can do is reorder the terms and write this as negative x squared plus 2x plus 63. And if we want to take one more step to make life a little bit easier for ourselves, we can factor out that negative so that we'll have the opposite of the quantity x squared minus 2x minus 63. So now we have negative 63 to consider, which we could get by taking negative 7 times 9, or negative 9 times 7. Negative 9 plus 7 would give us negative 2, which matches that middle coefficient, meaning we would want to go ahead and factor this as the opposite of the quantity x minus 9 times the quantity x plus 7. Keep in mind there are a few identical ways that we could represent this same answer. So in a first case we could take that negative out front and distribute it through our first factor to rewrite this as positive 9 minus x times x plus 7. Or we could factor it through the second factor, 
So x minus 9 would remain unchanged, and the second factor would become negative x minus 7. So three different ways to represent the same answer. I tend to like this version best, where that negative is out front, because we have everything factored out as much as possible.